Now, earlier tonight, we saw how Bridget Riley has picked up one or two tips from the old masters. And while we're on the theme of learning from those older and wiser than ourselves, Professor Sugata Mitra of Newcastle University has been championing the power of the grandmother. Tim Samuels went to Gateshead to find out more. Val Almond and Debbie Mann are the vanguard of a revolutionary new approach to global education. Once a week they log on to their computers to talk to, read and play games with groups of children from remote parts of India. Hello. Uh, my name is Debbie and I live in Loughborough, which is in the middle of England. Can you see this picture? Yes. yes. What is it? Yeah, yeah. I can this cross-cultural education project is the brainchild of Professor Sagata Mitra, who, originally from India himself, took on a post at the University of Newcastle four years ago. What's the problem at the heart of what you're trying to address? You can have places where you can't build a school. Such places exist in the world. And even more commonly, you can have places where you have schools, but good teachers don't want to or cannot go. So what do we do about that then? Because there are children everywhere, and that's what I'm trying to address. Let's talk about how this, this, this started. Well, that was 12 years ago, and at that time I was working in Delhi, and I was training people to learn how to program computers. And only the rich children got the opportunity to, to join these expensive training programs. The poor children did not. But there was nothing to prevent the poor children from having the abilities to be excellent programmers. So I thought to myself, what would happen if I put a computer like an ATM in a wall in a slum? What Sugata observed was that children would flock to these hole-in-the-wall computers and without any knowledge of IT and little or no English, teach themselves how to use them. And when I asked them, they said, well, um, if you've given us a computer which works in English, then we have to teach ourselves English in order to use it. It sounds very simple, but that's what they were doing. The lesson from that first five years of experiments is that groups of children given access to a computer in an unsupervised environment will be capable of self-instructing them to use it. Sugata then took his experiment a step further to see if he could deepen the children's learning experience. I asked a friendly girl in the neighborhood uh, who they you know, sort of played with, I asked her to pretend or to use what I now describe as the method of the grandmother which is that you stand behind the children and you admire them. Every time they do something, you say, well, I couldn't have done that. My God, when I was a kid, I would have never been able to find this. The children love that, obviously, and they want to show off to that figure. So when I came back to Britain, I started uh, a recruitment drive, so to speak, for uh, grandmothers who have broadband and who are willing to give me one hour of their time every week for free. Excellent. Again. What's their job? Their job is to provide that additional 20% boost to the children by admiring them. Excellent. Give yourselves a clap. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to achieve in India using the British granny cloud, as it's called. And there are now about 200 people from all over the UK in the granny cloud. You don't actually have to be a granny to take part, though. Grizzly, fantastic, well done. Can you tell me what this is I am wearing and who would wear it? The Queen. Qu the Queen, absolutely. Hello, I, I'm, I'm Tim. How are you? I'm all right. Have you heard of the, uh, a footballer called Wayne Rooney? Yes. What, what sort of bear does Wayne Rooney look like? A teddy bear. A teddy bear. <laughs> So many children in the world don't have access to education because of the remote area they live in, they're poor, whatever. Can you see how um, the leaves have dropped from the trees? That's very near to where I live. But through technology, you can get through to the poorest of children. And Sagata's new teaching methods have now also arrived on these shores. The lessons learned from his very first experiment in India with hole-in-the-wall computers 
are now being applied to schools in Gateshead. I'm Stephen. Bonjour. Bonjour, good. Well, the process is that you, you take a group of children, you ask them to make groups of four. Each group of four is allowed to use one computer with an internet connection. And then you trigger off the system with a question. That question is absolutely critical. What I want you to find out for me today is where does language come from? I don't know. I don't know the answer. Where, where are you going to start looking? It's got to put it on Python. Some scientists have got to say that language is the very thing that makes a human. Where did the language come from? this? With the answers, would it not be easier if the teacher just told you where language came from? No, because we can be learning many things for ourselves. Like when you get a hard question, and, and if like you find it out, it makes you feel uh, much older. Do you? So what you feel about nine and a half? Yes. What does that mean? And Scott. Whoa. I had my doubts about, you know, is this really learning? It's efficient. The children enjoy it. The right answer always comes back. But is it really learning? That's a lot of, that's a lot of stuff. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't have been able to get this much in, in such a short time. Really? So I waited for two or three months. I went back to the children. I asked them the same question this time saying you cannot discuss with anybody, you have to answer it yourself. And noticed very quickly that they were answering, that everybody was answering it correctly. And they were answering it with some, something akin to photographic recall. So I would tend to believe that what we are seeing here is deep learning happening through a mechanism which is very different from the existing model of how of how we educate. Are you ready? Go on then, Jack. Experts who study language know that there is no simple answer that explains what words came from. Over here with our well-staffed schools, the internet allows teachers to experiment with different ways of learning and it kind of depends on the attention span of the kids on any given day. But the truly exciting reach of technology lies in developing countries and the prospect of creating a legion of virtual teachers to send anywhere in the world. Let's go.